Okay, folks, welcome back. Here we are still in Battletech. We, um, succeeded in the last mission, and now it's time to pick out a contract for our next. Now, we don't have anything massively important. I think we're obviously going to go for this aggressive intrusion here, which is just a battle in some lowlands. Pay attention to these things when you pick any missions. <clears throat> battle is just the objective, and then you get environment. This is particularly important in regards to heat management and what loadout you bring. For instance, if you're in like a, a particularly mountainous area, it might actually be worth your time to bring out some jump jets. So we're going to take this mission. It's 17 days of travel. That is A-OK -okay with us. We're actually only going to get 115,000 and uh, six pieces of salvage. Well, that's OK. We'll start traveling there now. And on the way, we're just going to quickly pause this and double check our mech bay. Make sure we have any repairs that are needed started. I don't think we actually took any damage in the last fight. There's our cool uh, mechs. You can customize these a little bit. You can change the patterns. We already changed the color. We'll go with that one. That looks cool enough. We still have our, uh, our Vindicator, our Shadowhawk, Spider, and Locust. I don't believe you've seen the Locust yet. We've had no need to use it. Um, this is the the worst. This thing is awful. It It's the worst version of the worst mech. It's there as the ultimate backup. As soon as we have something to replace it, we'll be getting rid of that. I mean, it makes a half decent scout because it's it's super quick and like actually quite difficult to hit. But you hit that thing with one solid shot, and there's there's a pretty decent chance you're at least taking off a limb. So we'll have Decker by the time we get back to um, the place we're going. He usually drives our spider, our little scout mech, which is marginally better than the uh, the locust. A little bit tougher, a little bit more armament. I'm going to show you this, this travel time this time, but I'll probably start editing out these uh, travels and just putting back in the um, events that happen along the way, but I want you to see it all properly for the first time. I've got the financial report. So we're down a quarter of a million credits. That's fine. Right now we're at a sustainable level as far as our uh, income goes, but we, we want to start looking to go up in that. Essentially, the more popular we are, and the further into the main story we are, the more difficult but more rewarding missions that we get. So we're going to jump straight into this mission here. We'll uh, we'll bring Decker instead of Medusa. These are our four mechs, our four pilots, and we're going to deploy on this mission. Now I'm going to edit out this loading screen for you folks, so I will see you on the ground. Okay, so we're here in this uh, barren lowland. <clears throat> According to Darius, we're facing amateurs here. Which is kind of reassuring, because we're in that same boat. We aren't exactly the most veteran of uh, groups. Now we have something up ahead, but we don't even know that it's mech yet, because it's just an unidentified blip on the radar. So we're going to have our spider shimmy his way up there, hopefully find out exactly what it is we're dealing with. And it looks like it is, in fact, a vehicle, not a mech. That is a mech. See what we have. I imagine it will be like a locust, a spider. It's something light, because it's on turn four. So I think that, um... Yeah, that, that's going to be enemy number one. We have something moving on three. I believe that's vehicles. It's just there. Their tonnage will be bigger. We've seen two vehicles out there. And yep, it is a locust... We can't target lock this guy. It's very unlikely we're going to hit here because of the amount of evasive chevrons we have. But we're going to fire just to I remove one of those. Okay, we did actually manage to wing him a little bit. And as you can see, that thing has like little to no armor, little to no firepower. The vehicles probably actually pose more of a threat than the Locust does. And we are in a position where we can't actually fire at anything. So we're going to sprint on up here to get in position for next turn. And then we're going to uh, hopefully get uh, someone else in position to fire. Okay, that looks like that was a pretty bad miss on their part. What's up, boss? Now, uh, Behemoth, on the other hand, is in a position to uh, fire all she likes. I think we'll probably just take out that vehicle that's there. We're not going to be able to take out the Locust with a 35% chance of some LRM5s. 
Copy that. Okay, that's one scorpion tank down, one more which is 25% of the enemy. So the four enemies that we see right now are the four enemies that, there, that exist. There are no what more. Uh, what you can do, you can pop the Vigilance ability to make sure you go on the same turn as that Locust next time. Sprint up to here, and hopefully she will go before it, and can smash a PPC into its face. That should kill it, as long as we hit. Okay, so that is a missile unit. <clears throat> Shouldn't have too much success aiming at uh, Glitch with her four evasives, and it didn't. Barely did any damage at all, really. Okay, now she is going first. Uh, what are your chances of hitting? Because he still has the chevrons. Not good. I think we just take out this vehicle. We'll let that locust go. We'll see what he does. And then react to it. We will have uh, Decca, Behemoth, and Jester ready to counterattack whatever it is he does. Okay, this is what I want. I want him closer because I want Decca to be able to punch him. That's the same locust variety we have in the uh, in the shuttle bay, and as you well, yeah, in the, the drop pod, and it is it's pretty awful. Okay, now we can't actually do what I wanted, which was to punch that guy. He's put himself in a position where that's not going to happen. So we'll just take our two fifty percent chances here, remove some more of his evasion. Awesome, we destroyed one of his arms, put one of his legs at critical damage. We have this. Uh, tank down here. Just another scorpion, nothing too frightening. And it whiffed its shot anyway. So I think we may have um, Behemoth just turn and take that guy out. She has that AC5, that thing pucks an insane punch for this stage of the game. Which leaves us free to uh, fire everything we have at that locust. Now then, what are our chances here? They're not terrible, considering the amount of firepower we can bring on something that light. Well, we destroyed another one of its arm and its torso. It still has its main armament, which is the um, the laser. Everything else, like the two machine guns it had, were uh, they're not great. Pity we didn't destroy its legs, because once you get a, a legged light, they're, they're essentially a non-issue. And I think we will have uh, we'll have Decker run over and finish this up, and hopefully this should just be a quick. Oh no, he he didn't actually kill him. Okay then, uh, glitch. Please go finish that up. There we are. Now there's not much of this thing left to salvage, but we wouldn't really want it anyway. And that uh, yeah, small lasers. And machine guns and flamethrowers come in the support weapon category. They fire when you uh, melee people. A milk run just as expected. Yeah, that was that was pretty simple, pretty easy run. Unfortunately, the pay reflects that. Nobody's going to pay a massive amount to take out a locust and three tanks. But we don't have much of a um, outgoing balance either, so that's pretty acceptable. I'm going to skip you through this loading screen, folks, because we are going to be here a while, and I will see All you right, on here the other side. So, we got 115,000 credits. Nobody particularly cares what we did. No damage to our mechs, at least none that we have to worry about fixing. We got a part of that locust. I don't particularly care about that. I would run, honestly, I would rather have another AC5 in the bank. We got the locust part anyway from our random generation. And uh, some LRMs. I think we've got some ammo there as well. And this is what I was talking about. We're looking at the uh, the planet's surface. Some biomes are harder to bleed off the heat that you generate. Oddly enough, it's harder to bleed off heat in space. In uh, certain levels of this game. Citizenship in the Capellan Confederation is a point of pride for many. As it is earned through service to the state. Hmm. The more you know. And it looks like this loading screen might be a while as well. One uh, one major downside to okay. this game 
It is not well so, optimized. So I will see you on the other side of this one. Alright, around. After our last talk, I bit the bullet and started fishing around for uncertified contracts. And I re might, I repeat, might, have caught us something. Who's the client? Unknown. She didn't ID herself in a message, but she claims to have uh, to be a member of the Canobian elite. Uh, Canobian elite. She says that she's got a big job lined up, and she wants us for it. Us specifically. She called the commander out by name. Well, she has good taste in mercenaries, whoever she is. This all sounds perfectly legitimate and not at all suspicious. You're certain this client isn't really a bounty hunter? Because I got a list of about five different banks that would all love to repossess this ship. We're shopping for uncertified contracts behind the review board's back, Yang. Hell no, I'm not certain. But for what it's worth, I can confirm she's rich. She reached out to us on a high priority HBG message, and those ain't cheap. Following up on this will be risky, sure. But I've never let that stop me before. That's the spirit. And besides, we need this. We've been hemorrhaging sea bills out here for way too long as it is. Meeting with a mystery client sounds totally reasonable to me, given the circumstances. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Our new client vents us out an airlock and our corpses spend the rest of forever tumbling through in the icy fastness of space. Okay, well, thanks for that delight delightful image. Yang, look, John, I'll admit, this is sketchy as hell. But it's also the best lead we're likely to find. If you want to follow up, plot a course to uh, Bellerophon, and the client will be waiting. Okay. Uh, yep. So, on that note, we're going to level up our mech warriors. Behemoth has 1600 XP. Now, she already has the bulwark ability. This means essentially she makes a good frontliner who can just stand and take hits and dish them out. Which means, really, I'm choosing between one of these next abilities. So, I could get for her evasive movement, generates extra evasion. Considering she has an ability stand based around standing still, I don't think that's a good pick for the behemoth. Next up here, we have fire weapons up to three separate targets. That could be useful. And down here, we have sensor lock. If she's standing still and we're not wanting her to be high mobile, sorry, high mobility, I don't think this is the best thing. So I think we're going to go for the gunnery up here. Now, I don't think we'll get that this round, but we get the multi-target next time she levels up. We will also get a one-point tactics just because we can while we're here. Now then, Decker has no specializations. This guy's a blank canvas. We want sensor lock for this guy. He's in our light. He's the guy who does the least damage. So if we have to dedicate somebody to not firing their weapon and instead giving us a bonus to ours, we want it to be the light. Training complete. Glitch. Now, Glitch is a bit of a sniper. And I think for her, tactics might not be terrible. Let's see, what, what do we get for that? You know, I don't think I do like that. What else do we have here? Yeah, I think we'll go for the pilot and we'll go towards evasion for her. So she can just jump around in the back line and not be hit with her long range weapons. Now next up is us, John. And wait, what direction do we want to take John? I'm not sure that we really know that yet. So for now, we will just bump up a bunch of our passives. We'll get 10% chance to hit, better melee, harder to knock over. And a bit more health. Mech warrior training which just leaves Medusa. And for this guy, um, I think we'll do the same. We'll drop some random passives on him. And that's our upgrade done. And now, we head out to the Benefactor mission. It's another 17 days of travel. As you saw, the, the pay there was around a million credits. It's a full... Full star difficulty, which is more than we've had before. We've only gone half stars. But it should be interesting. It's, uh... Well, I know what mission it is. I've done this game before. It is pretty fun. And it, uh, it starts the game picking up just a little. And I will see you 
Actually, I think there's no point editing this out now. We're nearly there. So, as you can see, cutscenes in this game, they sometimes chug. I'm not sure why, because sometimes they're fine. Ooh, that is... That's pretty. Isn't this game pretty, guys? Okay, but there we are. We are three days away from Belleferon. Into orbit. Let's uh, proceed with our mission here. In orbit around Belleferon. Mr. Oliveira, thank you for honoring my request to meet. I am Anne-Marie Centrella. You may have heard of my family, I'm sure. Lady Centrella, this is a surprise. I wouldn't expect a member of the Canopian royal family to even know who we are. Let a lone approach us in such a non-traditional manner. This isn't a traditional contract, and I don't need Comstar asking questions. Besides, there's no reason to involve the MRB. I already know that I want to hire you. Have I piqued your interest, Commander Jameson? My interest, sure, but let's see the details before I'm willing to commit. Of course, Commander. I'd expect nothing less. The job I have for you is relatively simple. I need you to recover something for me, and I need it done quietly. In exchange for your services, I will pay down the interest on your rather sizable loans and buy you breathing room that you've been looking for. A fair deal, wouldn't you say? How do you know about... You know what? It doesn't matter. Just tell us what we're supposed to be recovering. This. Lady Centrella's image is replaced on the screen by a grainy photograph of an enormous grounded dropship. Ramshackle structures cling to it like barnacles. She's a derelict vessel, an Argo, one of only two ever made. For over 200 years, she's been lying in a, in, yeah, she's been lying in state on Axelus, a pirate moon at the heart of the frontier. I want her, and you're going to bring her to me. Yeah, and how exactly are we supposed to do that? I mean, that's a big ship, and she looks half cannibalized for parts. Look, you can see her ribs in the photo. I'm as enthusiastic about money as the next guy, but I'm a mech tech, not an aerospace engineer. I'll be damned if I can get that thing flying again. Relax, Mr. Vertman. I have an engineering staff on hand to attend to the Argo. Their leader, Dr. Farah Marad, has built quite a reputation for herself on the frontier. You'll find a jump ship waiting for you at Alloway. It will carry you to the pirate moon, where you'll clear a path to the crash site. Dr. Marad and her team will go to work on the derelict, and you'll protect them until the work is done. This should all be well within your capabilities, Commander Jameson. Unless I've come to the wrong company. You came to the right com uh, company, Lady Centrella. During my tour in the Oregon military, I can tangled with more pirates than I can count. Then I can see no reason you wouldn't accept my offer. Do the job well enough, and there will be more work waiting upon your return. Mr. Oliviero will never find you a better opportunity than the one I'm offering. Commander Jameson, I promise you that. She isn't wrong, John. We were looking for a lifeline, and I think this is as close as we're going to get. Okay. You got yourself some mercenaries. Very good. I'll forward your contract to Mr. Oliviera. We've heard stories of your exploits on the battlefield, Commander Jameson. Your reputation as a soldier is well known within the Magistry. Let's hope that you live up to it. <clears throat> so... We get to take this contract now. Another 18 days of travel, 1.1 million, three parts of salvage, off we go. Well, 14 parts of salvage, three that we'll pick. So, <coughs> I will uh, skip ahead of this journey for you guys. Okay, I'll so, there. it turns out we got one of our first events. Banging noises draw you to the shared mech warrior barracks, where you find Medusa disassembling one of the leopard's internal walls. There are already several panels neatly stacked beside him. He pauses, then explains. There's a few cubic meters of dead space back here. I'm making room so we can stretch without hitting the bunks. As reasonable as this sounds, the banks aren't going to like you modifying their property. So Medusa is a technician, meaning we can use this option here. We could pay... Or we could upset Medusa and order him to fix it. Now, I've never seen this option, so it's the one we're going to take. You look over Medusa's work. This is a temporary change, yeah? 
Medusa blinks and quickly nods. Yes, Commander, you say the word and I can have this back the way it was in 90 minutes. 120 tops, good as new. Good, carry on. However, in the future, you'll sign off before you start work like this. Clear? Yes, Commander. There we are, so we got morale increased by one. That's going to let us spam our abilities a little more when we're in um, in the battle. The things like vigilance and the call shots. So we're going to, uh, once again, skip ahead. And I shall and see you soon, folks. We're going to launch our new contract. Several hours later in uncharted space. That was one hell of a rough ride. My stomach's doing somersaults. That's because the crazy bastards used a pirate point to get us here. Okay. Non-standard jump points that exist inside a system's proximity limit. Pirate jump points, or pirate points for short, are hellishly difficult to navigate because they tend to be much smaller than standard jump points and are also subject to the effects of planetary gravitation. As a result, the odds are of suffering a missed jump when attempting to use a pirate point are high. When exactly did you realize that Centrella's jump ship crew was planning on doing that? As we were on our approach to dock with the jump ship, it was way out of position to use any legitimate jump point. Putting two and two together, I could guess what they were going to do. Well, we're here now, so let's move forward. You heard the commander. Everybody pay attention, we've got a job to discuss. A grainy map of a barren moon fills your view screen. A section of the image has been highlighted in white. The Argos crash site is here. Small dab in the middle of a pirate stronghold. Oh, sorry, smack dab. The ship, the stronghold, and everything around it belong to a self-styled bandit queen, calling herself Grim Sybil. Her gang is the closest thing that Alexis has to a ruling council. Grim Sybil? Is that supposed to be scary? It sounds like the kind of name you choose out of a hat. What do the defenses look like? They're patchy at best. I don't think the Alexis gets a lot of visitors. They have strong anti-air cover, but little in the way of ground-based defenses. I'm seeing a lot of vehicles, but battle mech activity looks light. Define light, what exactly are we talking about? I can't put an exact number on it, all I have are surface scans to go on. But from what data I do have, I'd expect the pilots to be able to field a full lance of light battle mechs, all of them in poor repair. There are mixed reports of something bigger that'll be Grim Sybil's mech. I don't have any information on tonnage or armament, but given the shape that everything else is in on Alexis, I'd imagine it's being held together with chewing gum and bailing wire. So the pirates have vehicles, turrets, and maybe a few battle mechs. What's next? The entire structure is surrounded by radar-guided anti-aircraft guns. Your first task will be to take down the radar towers so that some air can approach the derelict. After you've secured the crash site, she'll dock with the Argo and drop off the engineering team. And they'll miraculously get a 200 year old wreck flying again. Lady Centrella has bet a massive stack of sea bills that they will. For what it's worth, I believe her, the chief engineer, can pull this off. I'd never heard of Dr. Farah Murad before, but I did some digging after our meeting. She was telling the truth. The doc has a quite a reputation, it's supposed to be some kind of frontier engineering wonder kind, and a genius at bringing back dead ships. We'll see. I wouldn't expect to find a really top-notch top -notch engineer this far outside of League space. Hopefully Dr. Maraud will defy that particular stereotype. We'll find one way or another soon enough. Good hunting, John. I'll be keeping an eye on you from up here. Okay, so that's all the preamble over with. So now we get to drop. We're going to take the same team and the same mix that we had last time. No way we'd bring the Locust on purpose. And once again, folks, I will skip you through the cutscene and bring you back when we hit the ground. So here we are on the moon of Alaxis. Commander, it's every bit as charming as you'd expect a pirate-occupied moon to be. You'll find Grim Sybil's radar stations just ahead. Defenses appear to be limited to turrets and ground vehicles, for the time being at least. We know that Grim Sybil has at least one lance of battle mechs, so be ready for anything. Be careful of the pirate turrets as you make your way to the base. They pack a nasty punch and they can also sensor lock your mechs. Aim for the turret generators, that'll be the fastest way to neutralize the threat. After the pirate's radar stations are down, you'll be clear to proceed to the Argo. Good hunting, Commander. Knock out their radar cover, crush any pirate resistance, and secure us that derelict. Oh, well, there we are. So, for now, 
That means just running ahead recklessly, vaguely in the direction of our objective. Now then, we're going to want to be a little bit careful here. Even if we can get Decker in a line of sight of that generator, he can't kill it in one hit. He doesn't have the firepower. So instead, what we want to do is just get line of sight of it if we can for other people. But it doesn't look like we can do that. So what I might do is we will simply sensor lock that turret. No one else stay in there. Wake up, you idiot! We've got company! But they're driving giant battle mechs. We can't fight against them. Any more objections? Good. Get out there and fight! Grim Sybil, as you could imagine she would be, being very gracious to her mech warriors. Now, we sensor locked this turret because I was hoping to fire at it from a distance. But then I remembered I don't have any uh, long-range missile boats yet. We Good will get right on that as soon as we can. Can we hop up? We can. So this is going to leave Glitch in a position where she will be susceptible to return fire. But we definitely want that dead. So what we're going to attempt here is a multi-target. We want the laser, the PPC on B, everything else at A, and we're going to let that fly. So we dropped a little bit of damage on there, finished that guy off. Now we're going to hope to jump up in our blackjack and take out the other one. So we're going to hop right up here. We might be able to just take out the generator. We will assess our chances of doing that. Okay, you know, we have a much higher chance of taking this out because it's within range of our lasers. So we're just going to try and stop it doing any damage to us. Awesome. That's one, uh, two sets of turrets we don't have to worry about. As you can see, our heat went up real quick because of the environment we're in. We can't do too many of those big attacks. Now let's see how they respond. Okay, I think we can deal with that. Just Commander. positioning themselves. We're going to get... In the position here for the spider to hopefully do some damage. It looks like it's going to try and fire through the floor. And not at the generator, but at the the, uh, the radar tower. Hmm. I don't know if we essentially want that to happen yet. I think instead what we'll do is, again, we'll go for our sensor lock. We will reveal this target. We can fire long-range missiles that, at that if we like. Although I don't think we're too concerned about it. Instead we'll drop our first bits of damage here. And bleed off some heat onto that turret generator. There we are. We'll let the vehicles waste their time coming to us. Waiting for orders. We'll have Glitch also target that. We're going to turn off everything but the PPC. As long as she hits, this will be the end of the turrets. Awesome. Target destroyed. She is going to have to do basically nothing next turn to allow her heat to uh, die down. Good to go. Behemoth, we will target the large Not tower with. Awesome. That's a bunch of, well, it's a bunch of damage. Something. Quite a few vehicles on the way, but we can just step on these or kill them quite easily. Standing by. Okay, so we're actually going to have Decker jump up to there. Fires two medium lasers at this uh, tower. 
Not gonna be enough to finish it. Locked on target. But it's two solid hits. These vehicles are not only are they weak, they are really slow. So we're gonna finish off this tower now. Still gonna bleed off some heat while we do it. And now we can think about Target dealing with those uh, the vehicles. He's knocked out half our damned radar cover. You'd better get those LRMs online now, or you can learn what a belly full of laser fire feels like. I'm I'm imagining not good. Receiving you. Okay, so we'll have Behemoth stand up here. We're going to use some of our morale to give her the Vigilance ability, which will mean she takes half damage for the next turn. And then we'll have her, hopefully, just kill that Scorpion. Awesome. And these things are basically just in a queue to die right now if they come around in the way they currently are. Vehicle trash. Now in Glitch, we're going to have... Just wait. She needs to get rid of some of that heat she's built up. They'll get to kill this one next round. Okay, so here he comes. No, nope, he turned around. I'm gonna be honest, wasn't expecting that. Unless he couldn't make it over that ridge. I'm not sure what the AI is particularly thinking right now. Seems to be uh, very indecisive with what it's doing. Unless it's going after the spider now that it knows it's up there. Detecting That's unfortunate. They got a lucky hit on our head. And of course, you play. Okay. Yes, Commander. So Behemoth isn't going to be able to say anything. How far can she jump? Not far enough. Receiving you. Decker. Decker, move up. Copy that. New sensor contact. We will pop Vigilance on him now to make sure he takes half damage. And then fire at this Striker. I copy. Yeah, wasn't going to be enough to kill it. Didn't think so. But we might be able to have Behemoth here. Solve that problem with us. With some of our long range missiles. Nope, solid hit, but not what we needed. Okay, so Glitch also has long range missiles, so we'll see what we can do there. Only a 55% chance to hit because of how far away she is. But it was enough, it's all we needed. These vehicles, not exactly uh, strong. And that's the last of the heat she needed to be rid of. We'll move up with us. And this is probably going to really suck for our heat. But we are going to fire everything we have on that bulldog. Perfect, we got rid of that too. Enemy unit destroyed. So what's your plan, buddy? Looks like he might be going down to try and fight Behemoth. Yep, there he is. Bunch of different missiles. Luckily, she's taking half damage. And I think that's an LRM turret that's up the top. Using the same tactic we did with a, a spotter and some long-range missiles. Minimal damage on that hit. Yes, Commander. Now then. Decker can jump out here. And I think we might do that. This might seem a little bit stupid, putting him in, in firing range of everything that's out here, but he's going to get a ton of evasion, and he's going to get the start of our damage. I don't mind taking a little bit of damage on our spider here to get that first strike in. It's not going to be expensive to repair, and uh, 
I think it's worth it to make sure that we put as much damage on those turrets in the first volley as we can. Because I really don't want to have to um, deal with another volley of those long range missiles. I think that'll do more damage than the little bit of overheat does. Combined with our AC2s. Awesome. No more turrets on the field. Or at least that should be the case once this thing pops. No, that's still on the field. Okay. What's up, boss? There's not another generator, so I don't know where that thing is getting its power from. But we'll fire a PPC at it anyway. Okay, that's a solid hit. It has 20 health left. I don't believe Behemoth can actually kill that. So instead, she's going to take her shot at the strike ahead of her. That's unfortunate. She missed with a big gun. So that's going to get to uh, attack now. Or it's going to walk away. Now this game has no difficulty settings. This is the most stupid I have seen this AI be. Oh, I see. Nope. They want to... They want to focus the spider. That makes a certain amount of sense, I guess. Holding. Wasn't their smartest move, though. That thing did have a ton of evasion. Ready for now then, he is still overheating. So what we're going to do is just run him this way. In fact, we'll vigilance him to get him that defensive buff. Then we'll run him over behind this hill and just let him just let him heal let him bleed off that heat and then we'll uh, we'll brace him up I guess so let's see we should be able to finish off that other turret now I genuinely thought that was gonna die along with the, um, the turret generator I'm not sure why it didn't. But we should be able to just AC2 this guy to death now. Awesome. Which just leaves a couple of vehicles to track down. And we can't see them yet. So we'll just we'll wheel on this tower. They're going to come to us. Or we'll go past them when we go in towards the derelict. Decent old new volley there. Commander. Let's see. I think Behemoth will only really be able to use her um, long range missiles. But that's not the worst thing in the world. Oh no, she can use her AC5 as well. So this tower should come down next turn pretty easily. Wow, now it's going the other way. This thing, it needs help. Now, we still haven't seen any of the mechs, so even though it looks like we're doing really good right now, it's because we haven't uh, really encountered any resistance worth noting. We're going to fire both of our medium lasers. There we are. Second tower down. That's done it, Commander. The AA guns are down. Get to the crash site and secure the area. Well, that's definitely on our to-do list. Up we go. Should be a pretty bad day for that tank. We didn't kill it. I think that's the first time I've seen structure exposed on one of those that didn't die. But we have long range missiles. We'll finish it off without too much trouble here. Goodbye. Or not. Apparently I'm just being cocky for no good reason. What can I do for you? You can kill that tank for me. Oh, we'll fire that again. 
There we are. Vehicle destroyed. Knocked out a vehicle. And then there's this poor guy back here. We might have the spider turn around and go take care of that. Because he's going to be able to catch up to us relatively quickly. And I don't want to leave a vehicle behind us to shoot us in our rear flanks. Is that, isn't that one injured already as well? Got a lock. So we'll just have... Uh, just attack. Oh, oh. We'll just have the LRMs fire a volley or two at this now. Roger. And yep, it is wounded on the front. So hopefully this will be enough to uh, take it out. Waiting on you, Commander. Indirect fire here. Now once you get like the uh, the bigger missile launchers, like once you get like a, an LRM-20 or two on a single mech, you can do some real damage with that as a, as a tactic. We're just going to brace up, bleed off our heat while we wait for everyone to deal with this tank. Didn't see that coming. Thought he was going to get confused and run away again. Alright then, so we're going to have Decker just go step on that thing. He'll be able to sprint and catch up to us pretty quickly in the next turn. Targeting for physical attack. Yep, that thing's dead. One more for the trash heap. So we are going to start sprinting towards Moving out. the entrance that we Moving need. Out. You can turn off these animations, but I actually quite enjoy them. I don't get bored of them, I know some people do. This is our uh, our way in to the Argo, the ship that we're looking for. They left us a nice big gate, thankfully. And that's rough terrain. It uh, yeah it makes it easier to knock things off when they're on there. But we're not too concerned about that for now. I read you, Commander. Moving out. On it. I think we've actually got Decker facing the wrong way, but in we go. I'm sure nothing bad will happen from walking into the pirate stronghold. Got it. This can only be a positive thing. There's no way they have any more ways to retaliate against us. So, I think we might actually uh, stand on their building. I don't think, uh, yeah, well, I know high ground doesn't actually do anything, but I really like the idea of just standing on someone's roof. So we're going to do that. We'll move the Shadow Hawk up. We'll move Glitch and her Vindicator up as well. This crash site is secure, so now you've got a clear path to the derelict. So they're just going to drop off the engineering team now. I think I'm going to stop reading out absolutely everything that anyone says. That's our dropship there, the Leopard. Uh, the Spider, we're going to move up to the northern flank. This thing doesn't do much damage, but... Uh, you put it behind someone, it's going to give them pause at least. Baggage delivered. I'm taking the XO to a safe. Uh, yeah, I'm taking the leopard to a safe distance. That's Doctor Mirage. She's inside now. Marines, clear the ship of pirates. We're gonna have everyone brace up and wait and see how the enemy react. Okay, so we now have enemy contacts. Let's see what we're dealing with. The pirates have Alpha Squad pinned down in the Argo's main hallway. Okay, so we have a Jenna there. Talk to me. I think we're gonna jump out of its line of sight in the spider, get all that nice evasion going. And then we're gonna sensor lock him to remove two points of his evasion. That'll let our big guns wheel on him a little bit easier.
see what else we have here. Or not, we don't get to see that. Okay, I don't actually see... That. Okay, that's back up to two bars of evasion. Let's see what we have here. Or not. We're not going to get to see any of that. But we... Oh, no. Nope, we don't want to be moving. We want to be turning on the spot. But standing on this building is really messing up our uh, selection. There we are. Fire our AC2s. Now this Jenna is uh, its a little bit better than a Locust. But it's still a light, so as long as we hammer on the damage quickly, it's not going to pose much of a threat. We'll move up Behemoth, one thing. We'll put Vigilance on her. And then we'll let her let off that uh, AC5. And she missed. That really blows. I was counting on that. But we have something just as good over here. Never mind, we have more vehicles coming up. We'll probably have the spider try and take out the vehicles. We'll have him run around and step on them. Waiting for orders. While the, our uh, me mediums target the enemy uh, mechs. There we are, that's a much better hit. Destroyed his right arm, which is where a lot of his weapons are. Exposed a lot of structure. So, we're, out, we're actually um, unable to target the vehicles this round, so we're going to try and have the spider score a mech kill against that super damaged Jenna. It's in a decent position to do it. Spire Only 60% chances to hit because he's not brilliant at it. But we uh, destroyed another piece. It's not bad. We might be able to multi-target now and get away with uh, not devoting everything that one of our people has to that. So we have a commando and a locust, two vehicles as well. Yes, commander. I'm not particularly concerned about much right that's on the field right now. The biggest threat that they have currently is definitely that commando. But seeing as we have the locust so close to dead, uh, sorry, the genus so Firing close to dead anyway, problem. we're going to finish him off, hopefully. Yep, no. No, he's still up, Reporting. but Critical I don't hit. think he actually has anything left that he can attack us with. So we might leave him now and focus on the commando. Maybe just have the spider finish him off. In fact, I definitely think that's what we're going to be doing. So, we'll, uh... Yeah, we'll fiber everything we have here. Okay, that's a bunch of structure exposed. Hopefully Glitch can take advantage of that. So we will move her. Is there anywhere that she can get a solid shot on him? Yes, there. Got it. It's going to generate a little bit of heat doing this. And then probably quite a bit of heat doing this. Here we go. But, oh, she missed with the, the PBC. That was the important bit. But she did knock him down. So... You know, it's not a total loss. Both the Jenner and the Commando should go down pretty quick in the next round. And that's just a couple of tanks. I don't think we're too concerned about those. They can pack a wallop. Like, that thing is, um... It's not like it's unarmed. Vigilance will get that half damage. And then we'll just, uh, we'll fire off our 55% chances here. Awesome. There goes the Jenna. Pretty much exactly Enemy what we were down. hoping for. The Locust still gets to move. See what he's up to. Be 
Yep, that's what I figured. They like to uh, target the lights, especially when they're Losing damaged. Armor. That's why he has that vigilance going. What's up, boss? Uh, we can get a cold shot here. Can we fire everything? We can, and we have really good odds. And there's a reason we're doing this, and not the people who are a bit closer. One, we have the most weapons, but two, and that is going to leave Behemoth here, who has a better piling skill than we do, in perfect range to just go toe punt that locust and hopefully just kill it in one shot. Ready for orders. Your orders are to I toe punt that locust. Uh. Well, that was uh, that was a right hook, but I'm honestly okay with that as well. We got the result we wanted. Now then, if I was those tanks, I'd be feeling uh, pretty nervous about now. But apparently that guy doesn't. He's just going to run on right in there. And do a bunch of damage to the Shadowhawk. And so we are going to step on him for it. Melee attacks do extra damage against vehicles, and it's a way to bleed off our heat. Apparently the game felt the need to censor that particular death for us. Much less dramatic when glitches are involved in anything. You think you're going to steal my ship, you miserable little scrub? Nobody steals from Grim Sybil. I'm going to carve you like a roasted pig. That's a big mech. Yeah, but it's in terrible condition. Concentrate your fire and you should be able to take it. Okay, so Decker next. We're going to have him finish off that scorpion tank. Gather up a bunch of evasion while he does it, and hopefully get us line of sight. Locked on for physical attack. Awesome. Now, One more for the let's move on to uh, initiative stage three. They have something in here as well. They have that shadow hawk that we saw in the image there. There it is. Same model that we have, but it's at half armor. Now, all three of our mediums get to go. We're going to reposition the Blackjack over here. He's only going to be able to fire his AC2s, and he's not going to have good odds at it. But we're going to remove some of the evasion. Uh, no, we're not. We're going to fire nothing. We're just going to uh, brace and bleed off some heat. Good to go. Behemoth can move up into range. We're gonna brace there as well. Waiting on you, Commander. Glitch is gonna stand behind, hopefully as a, a less appealing target. We're going to vigilance her so that we get the brace without actually having to pay for it. And then we're gonna fire everything we have. Tell me what to shoot. Awesome. PPC actually hit, did its job. There's more where that came from. Now they get to go. This big, big mech at the back. This is a quick draw. This is the first heavy mech we encounter in the game. And uh, as our guy said, thankfully it is in poor repair, so it's at like 50% of its natural armor. Ready for orders. And we are going to go punch this mech with our tiny little spider. Awesome. Bring its evasion down, put our evasion you. right up. And then the PPC, we only get to fire this, just this on its own now, because of the amount of damage we put out. But it was enough, we destroyed the centaur, so caught him out. That just leaves the big man. Woman, I guess. Pirate queen, not king. Gonna build up our evasion. Take off the uh, the LRMs and fire everything else that we have. Of course, we spent a turn uh, bleeding off our heat, but now we're not still not in range, so we're just going to run up as quick as we can. Now, poor repair or not, this thing is still a heavy, so it's got a lot of weapons on it. 
Is it gonna split fire? Uh, oh, um, that sucks. I'm hit. No, it's just choosing not to fire everything it has now. And we're gonna uh, we're gonna continue the the scrappy do theme here. And we are going to uh, yeah, we're gonna punch this thing in the back Got with it. the spider. Alright guys, kick him in the back. We did actually uh, take out some rear armor there. That's pretty nice. Oh, that's an overheat alert. So we'll fire half of what we have. Didn't destroy anything. Behemoth up next. And we're going to continue to just get in this guy's grill. Hopefully knock him over. Well, he's not over, but he is unsteady. Hopefully the uh, the PPC will finish way. this off. That would be an overheat. We'll go with the LRMs and the medium laser. Got it. Hopefully that's enough. Yes, we knocked him down. That means next turn, everyone who fires at him get a pick where they fire, and we are just going to go straight for the core torso. And, uh... Hopefully, just rip this thing to pieces. Oh no, it still gets to go this round. What am I thinking? I'm so used to being slower than the enemy, because by the end of my other file, I had nothing but giant slow mechs. Well, he's guarded and entrenched. So, we're going to kick him in the leg again. Almost destroyed his rear torso. It's lost guarded because he was meleeed, which means we get to do our full range damage. And we're really, really underperforming here with our ranged. Because of the heat. But we don't have much to do to deal with that for now. Hopefully this will finish it off. There it is. Get your lance to the Argo, Commander. I'm just about done. Okay, then. So that's, uh... That's how that goes. We're gonna climb into this 200-year-old uh, ship and hope that it doesn't break apart when she tries to take off. It's done. I can't believe it. It really worked. The engines are online and I have thrust control. Go now, celebrate later. Roger that. Hang on, Commander. For the first time in two centuries, this beast is going to fly. Mission successful. Yeah, I would call that a pretty big success. I don't think we even took any structure damage there. A couple of light injuries, but nothing that we can't handle. And now we get one of the cool cutscenes that this uh, game has. I really enjoy the cutscenes in this game. They're super stylized, really enjoyable. I'm not going to risk uh, skipping past that, so we are just going to wait for that. Okay, so we got 1.15 million. We got... Oh yeah, we, we did get some structural damage on the spider because we uh, we cooked it a little bit. Lots of kills across the board. And now the best bit, we get to pick our stuff. Now we didn't get enough to uh, put that quick draw together. I would have liked to have done that. We can't actually put any of those mechs together, so we don't get a heavy out of this. I think that's the first time I've actually seen that happen, where we didn't get one. So we're going to look for any unique weapons. There's none of those on the field, so we don't particularly care about much of this. I guess we will... Uh, Grab an AC-5, a large laser, and that one piece of the quick draw that we got. Give us some other random bits, but nothing unique, nothing we particularly care too much about. That will put us a little bit over 2 million once we get paid for this mission. Which is uh, as healthy as our bank accounts ever looked in this game. And now we get a cool cutscene. 
The mercenaries of the Eridani Lighthouse trace their lineage back to the Star League defense forces of the 3rd Regiment Combat Team. Use your morale-based inspiration abilities to pivot the battle in your favor. That is true, that's one of the... The combat's a bit asymmetrical in this. We get cool abilities, they get numbers. Any moment now, folks, we're going to get that cutscene. It's going to be great. Welcome to Loading Screen, the game. Okay, I legitimately did not think this was going to be this long. Yeah, we'll skip forward. Here we are. She is Lady Kamea Arano. Cool tat breath. In exile, high orbit, Alloway. You've done excellent work, Commander Jameson, and you've earned yourself an opportunity to do more. Meet your real client. I don't believe she needs an introduction. I'm happy to see you again, Jester. Or, shall I say, Commander. You've done well for yourself. The old man would be pleased. It must come as a shock to you, seeing us here at Alloway. Seeing us at all. I apologise for that, but I had to be sure that you were the mech warrior I remembered before I reached out to you. And now, with the Argo on its way to Libertron for, for repairs, I know you are everything I remember and more. I'm everything I remember. You show up after three years, and that's all you have to say. Go easy on her, Commander Jameson. She's been living in exile ever since Espinosa stole her throne. The broadcasts of her death were directorate propaganda. Well-crafted lies to keep the masses in line. And with that, Khmer, I leave you to your reunion. Best of luck with the negotiations, and keep me appraised of whatever, your, whatever decision you come to. Lady Centralis' face winks off the view screen. The dull blue glow of her hollow projection slowly dies away. Lady Centrella was right about the propaganda. My uncle's directorate runs on lies. Though in this case, they very nearly became true. The directorate's assassin per per pursued us into the frontier. In the months following the coup, we had more than our share of close calls. Eventually, they gave up looking for us, and we've been living in exile ever since. You had Centrella send us after the Argo. I'd like to know why. In part, as a test of your abilities, to make sure that your performance on Coromedia wasn't a fluke. Our experience in the coup has taught us to be careful, Commander. We couldn't just reach out to you on faith. But the Argo herself is important as well. She isn't just a ship jester, she's a symbol of reclamation and rebirth and the return of better days. You'll see for yourself soon enough she was a majestic vessel once, a true product of the Star League. Under Dr. Murad's care, she will rise again. Okay, you made it off Karma, dear, and you found me. Let's talk about why. I imagine you've already guessed. I intend to seek justice for my uncle's crimes. I intend to take my throne back. But I can't do it without you. We have resources, an army drawn from all across the frontier. Perhaps most importantly, we have the patronage of Lady Centrella, and the tacit support of her government. That means money. A great deal of money. As it happens, I like money. A lot. But I assume that Centrella isn't doing this out of the goodness of her heart. 
No, the Magistry sees Camille's claim to the throne as an asset worth paying for. They want to see the director dealt with, but it isn't in their interest to do it themselves. They'd prefer to keep their hands clean. The Rimworld, uh, yeah, the Rimwood periphery is a powder keg. Tensions between the Turian Concordat and the Federated Sons are high. My uncle's military posturing could be viewed as a provocation by either side. If open conflict between superpowers were to erupt, it would be difficult for anyone to remain neutral. The Magistry wants to avoid getting dragged into a major war. And your house central is best hope for a clean solution. They fill your war chest, you remove the directorate from the board, and the Magistry lets tensions between the Federated Sons and the Turians simmer down on their own. Am I reading that correctly? Correctly enough. But understand that this isn't just about defusing a dangerous situation. For me, taking on the, di the Directorate is personal. My uncle betrayed me. The Founding Council has been reduced to a handful of powerless figureheads, and our very identity has been cut away and discarded. House Espinosa is long overdue for a reckoning, and with your help, I will bring them one. Join me, and we will not fail. You've already sold me on this, Khmer. I pledge myself and my company to your cause. And your wallet, but we'll save that for later. I was hoping you'd say that. Of course, you cannot wage war on my behalf while your travel restrictions remain in place, and so, I shall break them. Now that you have pledged yourself to me, I will buy your company's debts. All of them. You'll be free to travel and see clients as you please, so long as you come to me when I call for you. And on that, on the day that I reclaim my throne, your obligation to me will be forgiven, your debts wiped clean. Of course, you will also be paid for every battle you fight at our behest, at a rate you will, that will feel quite generous given the clients you're accustomed to. Thanks to, us, thanks to House Centrella, we have money to burn. It's been a long time since we've been able to stretch our wings. It'll feel good to get out of our, out of our little corner of the frontier again. Another feeling, John. We'll escape our lives in exile together. I'll take my leave of you now. I have an army to rally and preparations to make. But it won't be long before I contact you again. And when I do, I'll need you to be ready. Pre prepare yourself and your company. Our war is about to begin. Lady Rano just bought up all of our deck, Commander. That means no more banks restricting our jumpship access. We can travel to more systems now, but we should still stay clear of the major states. We don't want it to look like we're going to cut and run. Good news, Commander. Once Doc Maraud and her crew got that wrecked ship safely away, they found most of a Centurion in his cargo hold. It's not equipped for combat yet, but with a little love and attention, I think I could return it to service. Swing by the mech bay and check it out to order a refit. That mech you asked for is cleared for fighting. And, uh, yeah, we just got a Centurion 9A. That was the same model that, um... Mastiff had. So we're going to swing by and customize that before we end off this episode. Uh, the, the first time I did this game, I got the... I got that quick draw, the heavy mech. That's going to take nearly a week to fix. This thing is just... It's not ready for combat, as the guy said. But we should be able to do something about that pretty easily. So, let's say we have uh, 22 tons to play with. We're going to put an AC5, get some AC5 ammo in here. We're going to drop in a small laser in that support weapon slot, so when he punches someone, he gets a free shot with a small laser as well. That leaves us with three missile slots. see. I think we want short range missiles. I think we'll go for three SRM f oh, maybe not. There we are. Bit of an odd combination, a six, a four, and a two. We'll then go for some ammo. Two lumps of that. We'll throw in four heat sinks. 
and then we'll drop the last half a ton into more armor, which is going to just spread that out around for us. That's looking pretty good. I'm okay with that as an initial setup. It's um, We've filled all of our weapon slots. We have an AC5. We could have got one more medium laser. Um, that would mean sacrificing a heat sink. Honestly, I, I think I'm okay with just having one. Or we could drop... Yeah, we'll drop that six. Oh, we don't have another four. Can we get just like two more twos? No, no we can't. Okay, well, maybe not. We will keep it as it is. So this is going to take a long time to do. Yep, that's going to be 35 days because our current, uh, our current capabilities for that kind of work are minimal at best. But that thing looks cool as hell. And I think on that note, folks, we're going to end this episode. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.